Hello, hello, happy new year. I hope you guys are so, so well and have had a wonderful Christmas break and you've been well rested and well cared for and maybe got some lovely Christmas gifts. Um, just gonna check my phone's on silent. Um, so I'm just gonna wait to see a minute or two um, because I know a few people were hoping to join live and if you can't join live and you're watching the recording, then hi to you as well. Hi, Valerie. So of course, if you are joining live, then you have the option to pop in any comments as we go and any questions if anything's not clear. Um, and even if you're watching the recording after, then just feel free to um, pop any questions below and I can come back to them. Just tag my name so that I see them. So just put at Miranda Lewis and then I'll see that you've put a comment. Mm. But otherwise, let's get into it because quite a few things that I want to cover with, um, hi Karen, um, with today's, um, today's live, our little mini workshop. Sorry, I've got messages coming in, which is a little distracting, so I'm going to try not to be distracted by those. Um, so, where do we start? Well, we actually start by going back rather than forward. So instead of jumping straight in and thinking about, okay, what do I want to achieve this year, etc., etc., we actually have to pause and reflect. So we need to take a moment and, you know, like I, I'm not a big one in looking back, back because what's been has been and the past is the past. You know, I encourage us to be present, but there is also some benefit in just pausing to see what worked, see what didn't work, see what moved the needle. Because the thing is that if we just keep doing the same things over and over again, which is kind of human nature to just keep keep going on repeat, and that's because much of what we do is created by habits. And habits are very often unconscious, so we're not even aware of what we're doing or what created the desire to do what we're doing. So taking a moment to sit and just look back and think to yourself, okay, this worked, this didn't work, and what do I want to do more of and what do I want to do less of? So these, you know, these are questions that you can certainly journal on. And obviously this video will be here for you and you can come back to these questions and take time. And, um, you know, if you're watching the recording, then obviously you can pause and take extra time if you need. But so some questions to consider um, that you could just pop down in your journal. Uh, what were your 2020 wins and victories? What were your 2021 wins and victories? Now you may say, oh my God, Miranda, come on, this year was crazy. Um, there were no wins or victories and that's just not true. I simply do not believe that, not for a single second. There will, for sure, if you take the time to reflect, there will be things that were great about last year. Yeah, sure, there are things that were not great about last year, but there will be things that you learned and there will be things that you know, you could consider a win or a victory. So I'd like you to be clear on, okay, you know, that was something that went well for me. That is something that um, I'd like to do more of. So for me, for example, my business has moved entirely online. That wasn't necessarily something that I was planning on, but it's, you know, what happened under the current circumstances. Now, I actually consider that a great um, result of what's happened this, this year because it means that I don't have to travel as much. It means that I get to work from home and be more flexible with my hours around my kids. Um, there are definite benefits that have come from that. It also gives me the freedom, for example, the first time ever over the summer when many of my clients go away and take long breaks, over the summer, I was able to continue to work pretty much as normal because even though I was away in Scotland and many of my clients were away in different countries, I was still able to be connected to them because we'd moved online. And therefore, you know, for someone who's self-employed and, you know, my business can sort of go through seasons, it was a much more, my income was more sustained across the year. Again, that's a great blessing to me. I'm grateful for that. So 
even when you know things go back to normal, um, I would like to continue my business to be online. So that's something that I've learned. That's something that this year has been a blessing for me. And now I need to think about how I can continue to, you know, create my online presence and to be, you know, a little bit more educated in marketing and things like that. Um, because this is something that I want to pursue. Valerie says, I did more online training when I don't usually have the time. Yeah, amazing, that's brilliant. I also feel so grateful that we're connected to in, you know, incredible leaders and teachers from all over the globe, um, which you know, they too, just like me, have chosen to take their business online. They too are choosing to take their business online, which means that we then have access to people who maybe previously you had to fly to America or someone to, to see or hear speak, but now you can you know, join their online virtual event and you have access to incredible um, presenters and speakers and you know if that's your bag <laughs> or um you know so anyway just to reflect and think about what was good from last year because there will be good things and then also just to think about okay well what contributed to those wins so if you did have success in one area what actually contributed to that so i for example um i i reached a new rank in my in my business and i need to consider okay well what contributed to that success what was it that um propelled me forward and you know part of that is definitely because of the online thing and part of that is you know from other uh, other reasons but so i need to think about okay well if if i was able to achieve that what made that work and what do i need to do in order to keep achieving that um so we don't want to just like coast through the year and like i said at the beginning just keep doing what we've been doing because some of what we've been doing is maybe things that we need to let go of and some of what we've been doing is perhaps things that we want to change or shift and so it's really important that we have that clarity uh, and i just love this quote i don't know who said it but if you don't know where you're going any path will take you there if you don't know where you're going any path will take you there so that's what i'm meaning about having clarity because if you don't know where you want to go you'll just go any which way and that doesn't mean like i by all means and the reason why i'm teaching this is because this is hard for me because by all means i'm like a very much go with the flow i don't really i'm not a big planner i am not at all in this aspect controlling um i love to be guided by inspiration i love to go you know with with the flow of things and you know i only decided yesterday to do this live you know so yesterday actually saturday night whilst i was lying in bed the thought came to me i was like yes i'm gonna act on that on sunday i you know popped in and let you guys know that i would be doing this today and spent you know an hour or so this morning clarifying my thoughts and then here i here i am this isn't something i'd planned for so you know i i i say this with the um with the awareness that depending on your personality this can be this can be tricky and truly i have to watch this because what it can lead to is a lot of distraction what it can lead to is me spreading myself too thin doing too many things but not going deep enough in what I am actually trying to achieve and so unless I'm clear about what my goal is I will just go I'll just keep doing this that this that and because it feels good because I enjoy it but it's not leading me to to my to my destination if I'm not clear about what my destination is so when something you know draws me and i'm inspired to do it i need to think well does this does this align with what i want to do now i've already told you guys i'm i'm really keen to create a stronger online presence so when the idea came to me i'm like oh yes that would be awesome i can do a goals workshop because obviously this is what you know i'm going through currently i'm just teaching you what i'm doing um 
And, and so I have to think, well, yeah, that does sound cool and I am inspired to do it, but is it an alignment? Is it actually worth my time? And because, you know, I want to nurture this group and because I, I want to, you know, create a community here, well, yeah, it does. It, it, it is an alignment with, with my greater, you know, goal, my bigger destination for this year. So then it's like, okay, yes, I can do that. But you have to, if you don't know what your goal is and you're not checking in with yourself, you'll end up just saying yes to too many things. And like I'm in the habit of doing, spreading yourself too thin and not actually ever achieving what it is that you want to achieve. So we need to be pretty laser focused on what it is that we do want to achieve because there's only a certain amount of time each day, right? You know, so we we can't end up doing everything. And, and I truly say this as something that I am learning and having to keep practicing for myself. Oh, thank you, Karen. Um, so let's now look at, um, at creating, and I use the word goals rather than resolutions. And I think it'll become clear to you why I'm talking about goals. But resolutions tend to be a sort of a, a big sweeping statement. And it can be like, okay, what do I want to achieve in 2021? Well, you know, I want to lose weight. I want to make more money. I want to, you know, have um, attract a, a, a relationship. These are big sort of quite airy, fairy, lofty things. They're not very specific. They're um, kind of just dreams really. And there's nothing wrong with dreaming. I, I really um, encourage you to dream. But when it comes to actually creating something that we want to, to achieve, it needs to be more than just a dream. We need to break it down, reverse engineer it, and actually look at how practically we're going to make it happen. So, uh, you know, the areas that most people consider are, you know, normally you may have something different, but normally within the realms of health, business, relationships, and self-care or self-development. And you may have something which is speaking to you louder than, than another, and that's totally fine. So you're, you may be more um, focused on your business for this year, or you may be more focused on your health, or you may be really wanting um, to change your relationships or work on your marriage or, um, you know, with your kids or something like that. Um, or it could be just that you've not been very well this year and you've realized, okay, I really need to work on my self-care. So there could be one area which is talking to you louder than the other areas, but generally speaking, we tend to have um, desires in those four categories. So what I'd love you to start by thinking about is what your, what your, that loftier idea is, that sort of bigger dream picture is. So when we're talking about, okay, we're sitting here together in a year's time, what would you like to be able to say that you've achieved, you know, so in January of 2022, you're sitting and you've done X, Y, and Z. Like, what would be your what would be your desires? And just write those write those down. Like, they don't have to be practical at this moment in time. Just writing down, you know, just ideas, things that feel good. Your your desires and and like just dream a little on those. So again, please come back to this recording if you'd like to, and you can pause and take more time. Hi. Um, all right, so once you've had your little uh, moment of, of dreaming, of like feeling into um, what would feel, you know, just amazing come this time in a year, now we need to start to break it down because it's one thing having those big lofty dreams, but now we've got to step back and think, okay, well, how am I actually going to make this happen? And that might require tweaking. So that doesn't mean that we have to let go of having dreams. Dreams are amazing. They help us to, to keep reaching. But 
but we do have to make sure that what we're looking to create is realistic and achievable. Otherwise, we just get thwarted in our, in our desires and no longer think that we're capable and feel like a failure and all that kind of stuff. And that doesn't make us feel good. So once you have your, your bigger dream, and I'll give you a specific example in a minute, but once you have your specific dream, then I want you to think about your quarterly goals. So, you know, obviously now we're in Q1. So look at that bigger dream and then, okay, well, in Q1, which is three months long, how can I break it down to be taking the steps? If you think about it, there are 12 months of a year. And so if your dream or your goal is a year long, essentially you've got as a starting point, these 12 stepping stones. So we've got 12 months, which we can use to our advantage of, of giving us um, some, some clarity about how we're going to step in that direction. So first of all, <clears throat> your first quarter, so your first three months, what would that bigger dream break down to look like in reality? And then we go even a step further back. So no longer just, a, no longer quarterly, now it's monthly. Okay, so what in the first 30 days of January of Q1, what does that look like? And then we go even a further step back and we look at our daily habits. So do, do you see we've gone from having a year long dream to breaking it down into, okay, quarterly, to then taking it even a step back into monthly, and from monthly, then actionable daily habits. And if daily habits seems a little bit, you know, you can't be that precise, you could keep it as weekly. But I do encourage you, if possible, is looking at it as a daily habit rather than um, keeping it as that longer term you know, because how are you going to achieve it? What are you actually doing to make it a, a, a reality? So let's use a, let's use an example. So take weight loss, and I, I say this only because I know many of my clients will be thinking about this, particularly after Christmas. Um, so take weight loss. Now that's like a really <laughs> just very general, isn't it? There's nothing specific about that. There's nothing measurable about that. Um, so what does weight loss mean? So let's say this individual to weight loss, it means losing one stone. So they want to be sitting here in one year's time, one stone lighter. Okay, great. So we have that. So let's take it back to quarterly. So what does it look like to, to, in a year's time, be one stone lighter, what does that look like quarterly? Well, so that's losing perhaps three or four pounds a quarter. So now we've got our quarterly goals. Okay, now what does that look like monthly? Well, monthly, it's probably losing one pound a month. So now we look at, okay, daily. What are we doing daily so that in this one month that we're because we're just taking it step by step. In this one month where I my goal, so we've gone from losing a stone in a year to losing one pound in 30 days, what am I going to do daily for 30 days to make that a reality? And then that's when we look at our habits. Okay, well, I am going to drink two liters of water every day. I am going to make time for 30 minutes of movement every day. And I'm going to experiment with cutting out sugar and, um, you know, being a little bit more aware of my carbohydrate intake. So now that person has a 30 day plan of what they're going to do to lose one pound. And that's a lot more achievable than just saying, I'm going to lose a stone in a year or even I'm going to lose weight this year. Do you see? So you can take any, any desire that you have, any goal that you have, and break it down, reverse engineer it in that same way. What habits do you need to employ 
to create what that end destination is. So I hope this is making sense and you can let me know in the comments if, if um, anything re requires further clarity. Um, now, I couldn't talk about this topic without talking about mindset because I, I'm not sure that there's anything that's more important than mindset. So whilst it's really, you know, brilliant to be practical and to have the steps that you're going to take, that gives you that sense of feeling organized, of feeling like you know where you're walking. And and, and remember the example that I started with at the beginning, like if you don't know which path you're taking, you'll just take any old path. So when you know what your plan is, then of course you can, um, you can question anything that you're doing alongside, well, does this take me in the direction that I want to be going in? Um, and so if, for example, weight loss is your goal and you are, uh, I don't know, take a, just a silly example, your, um, your friends want to go to, I don't know, a pizza restaurant, whatever. I mean, there's nothing wrong with eat, eating pizza, but I'm just giving a silly example. Your friends want to go to a pizza restaurant together. And you're like, well, does that align with my goal? Because today I've decided I'm drinking my water, I'm reducing my, my sugar and my carbohydrates, and I'm doing my 30 minutes of exercise. Instead, could I suggest to my friends that we, we go for a walk and they come back to my house and I've made a healthy soup that we can all enjoy together after? You know, I'm just giving a really silly random example, but, but do you see how when you know what it is that you want, then you can be clearer about, about everything, about what you do and whether what you're doing is adding up to where you want to go. Because if you want to go here, but you're going there, you're not going to get there, right? So you need to keep on steering the ship in the direction of where you want to go. And that's where having that um, like real sense of clarity and having those steps marked out for you is going to really help you and I don't mean to be you know a complete control freak about these things and I don't mean to not have any fun or not be flexible of course not but if you you know take for example you've got um, a business goal in your in in your heart well you know maybe there's a habit that needs to be changed around watching Netflix each night perhaps you watch you know an hour's Netflix every night and you spend um, half an hour on social media every day. Well, again, like once you've mapped out what it is that your goals are, then maybe that hour of Netflix, it needs to go because that's your hour of doing something on your business. So you need to have the clarity and the awareness so that you can let go of what's not serving you and you can keep going in the direction that you want to be going. So like I said, mindset is in, a, in my mind, so, so crucial to everything that we do. Um, and developing a really um, strong foundation in your mindset is going to help you to achieve what it is that you've, you've now gone to set yourself out to achieve. And it's really important to realize that everything is created twice. Everything's created twice. First at the level of thought, and then in actual physical reality. So there's nothing, there is nothing that doesn't start at the level of thought. And once we're clear that our thoughts are really, really key and really watching the thoughts that we allow ourselves to have and building on the thoughts that we do want to have, which are gonna help us to move toward the destination that we want to move in, then we can be more uh, discerning about what we allow, more discerning about when we start to have a negative thought about something of asking ourselves, is this helping me to reach my goal? And if it's not, we need to let it go. We need to release it because our thoughts are, are our energy and our energy is what we attract toward us. So being mindful that everything starts at the level of thought and then being mindful that 
we want to have thoughts that are going to really move us forward and not hold us back. You know, there's limiting beliefs, um, the thinking that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy, that why should we have this, all of those kind of things, all of those thoughts, which are really normal. Um, we need to be aware of them and we need to let them go and choose not to entertain those thoughts. And so um, this is really about understanding that we create our destiny. And so if, you know, it's not uncommon to fall into the, into the role of victim. And again, I say this with great love and I only say this because I've experienced it for myself in my own life, but it's really easy to believe that what happens to us is just happening to us. And that's not actually, that's not actually true. Now, whilst there are, of course, things that are out of our control, of course, there are things that are out of our control. But again, what are you choosing to focus on? Are you choosing to focus on the things that are out of your control that you can do nothing about? Or are you choosing to focus on the things that are within your control? Because whilst there are things that are out of your control, there are a great many things that are within your realm of control. And so don't give your energy to the things that are, are outside of your control. Don't say, I can't achieve this or I can't do that because of the things which you cannot control. Just don't give time and energy to that. Don't pay attention to that. Don't watch the news, you know, at all as far as i'm concerned don't give your energy to what you what you cannot what you cannot manage give your energy to the things that you can manage and those are the things relating to your business to your health to your family to your relationships those are the things that you can you know really look after those are the places that you can make choices and and then even on the things that you cannot control, well, you can still control your response to those things. And so there's a great quote, which I love by um, a great author called Jack Canfield. And he uses this equation, which is E plus O, no, E plus R equals O. So event plus response equals the outcome. So the things that you can't control, the event, let's just take a really stupid, little example, take a traffic jam. Beyond your control, nothing you can do about it. You're stuck in that traffic jam. You're going to be late for whatever it is that you're aiming to, to get to. But you have a choice of how you respond to that traffic jam. You can either sit in that traffic jam, like getting angry, you know, feeling frustrated, honking your horn, all that, right? So that could be one response, or instead you could choose that your response is to use this time as a way of, you know, calling your mum who you've been meaning to call, or listening to an audio that you've been meaning to listen to, or sit and focus on your breath and practice a little bit of mindfulness, or daydream about some, you know, some work creation. Um, there are many ways that you could use that time to your advantage. But it's the same event and it's a different response which creates a different outcome. Meaning that you, when you do move through the traffic, you could arrive at whatever your destination is in feeling, you know, like I just had a great two hours stuck in traffic because I used it to do X, Y, Z. Or you could arrive at your destination and be like, oh my God, that was, you know, so frustrating. I'm so cross. You'd be all wound up, etc., etc. So same event, different response creates a different outcome. And we can so clearly, for those of you who have kids, we can so clearly see this play out, play out when we when we try this out on our kids. So we can see an event and our response as the, as the parent, our response directly influences the outcome. If we can step back and like, grab onto some patience and some kindness and all of that and some compassion and work through that issue with them rather than shouting or like feeling frustrated with them or putting them to shame, completely different outcome. Like it might take 10 minutes longer with the more measured response, but that outcome 
has just saved us hours <laughs> or we can, you know, and I'm, again, <laughs> there's no such thing as perfect. And so, you know, it, there's not going to be, there are, there are going to be times when you don't respond in the way that you wish you had. I'm just saying it's very clear to us as parents, I think, when we see how our response really influences the outcome. But it's exactly the same in our lives as well. Um, so really just moving out of this victim mentality and really taking the ownership and understanding that we are the authors of the book that we choose to write. We create our lives and we need to choose to let go of the things that we can't control and we need to choose to focus on the things that we can control and you know really manage our responses to the things that we can't control because even that even those things that we can't control is going to create a different outcome um, and there's a really fantastic quote that i'd love to read to you from a course in miracles um, and it goes i am responsible for what i see i choose the feelings i experience and i decide upon the goal i would achieve and everything seems to happen to me, sorry, and everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. So just really remembering that our energy, our thoughts are what in reality is what we attract and is what comes to us. And so really watching out for our thoughts, making sure that we are supporting ourselves, that, you know, Say, say weight loss is, is, your, is your goal. And every time you look in the mirror, you have a negative thought about yourself. Well, that's not supporting you, yourself. That's not helping you. So you don't want to shame yourself into weight loss. You want to motivate and inspire and encourage and be your best cheerleader for weight loss. You're not doing it because you want to shame yourself. You're doing it, it's not because you're ugly or disgusting or anything else, which leads on to a really important point is that when you're setting your goals, you, it's important to consider the bigger picture, the bigger why. So take the weight loss, for example. It's like, as I said, it's not because you're crappy or ugly or, you know, because you actually need to, to change yourself. You don't. But you're choosing this because you want to, you really like it when you feel confident. You really like it when um, your genes, you know, just you know, look good. You really like it when you can move more nimbly. You really like it when you you don't have a bloated belly. You really like it when your digestion works sufficiently. You know, it feels really good when, you know, you can run with your kids and not lose your breath. You know, all those things, those are the reasons that you're doing it. So being really clear about your why, about why you want to achieve it is going to help you to, to, stick to stick to it because it's not for the yeah it's not for the superficial reason that you're going to then want to continue to do it so really understanding the reason the why behind it um is going to be your power to to keep you motivated and to keep you encouraged um and so yeah i think that's probably everything that i want to share with you apart from a few little announcements so just check Valerie's, um, Valerie, that's good. But then I start thinking that 30 day sacrifice for a one pound loss is, isn't enough encouragement for me. I will give up too soon. Okay. So you're talking about weight loss and you're talking about, so what's the sacrifice? What's the sacrifice? Like there is no sacrifice. These are, this is what you're choosing. You're choosing whatever you're choosing. So you're, so the example I gave was more water to, to release sugar um, and to move for 30 days every day. Where's the sacrifice? I mean, if you, you couldn't frame it, you can frame the giving up sugar as a sacrifice, but no, don't choose that thought. You're, instead, you are releasing the hold that sugar has on you because it swings your energy up and down because you feel addicted to it, because it makes you um, feel moody, because it disrupts your skin, because it you know puts weight around your middle and it feels podgy and you don't like it and you don't like 
the way that that feels when you try to do up your trousers. You're, you're not sacrificing anything. That, that's a thought that you're having. And I would encourage you to re reframe the thought. You don't have to do anything. This is all within your choice. This is what you are choosing. And you're choosing it because, and then you have to go back to your greater why. You're choosing it because, you know, let's take Netflix, for example. Again, that would be easy to say, I'm sacrificing an hour of watching Netflix. Um, no, you are gaining you are gaining having an incredible business. You are gaining, you know, having an income. You are gaining being more connected to your clients or your customers. Look at what it's giving you, not what it's taking away. And that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a choice. Okay, cool, great. Lowering your carbs is my issue. What do I replace them with? With fats and proteins, fats and proteins. So you'll... You'll definitely, because Valerie, I know, is joining our cleanse, um, you'll definitely get lots more inspiration around, you know, specifically this question during the cleanse. But um, yeah, don't look at giving up carbs as a sacrifice. Give it, a, look at it as a, you know, and you don't even have to give them up fully. Um, but you need to, you need to consider, you know, what is it that you are choosing? Because you don't have to take on anything and you don't have to take it on 100% either. So I'll share with you now that in the cleanse, because I've already been thinking about this, in the cleanse, um, for those of you who haven't joined the cleanse before, um, in the cleanse I ask at the beginning of the program everyone to choose one thing one thing that they're going to release for the 30 days. Um, so in the past I've done caffeine, um, I've done have I done? I've done, well, the most recent one I did caffeine. Um, and I, I, I have probably done sugar before as well. But so in this cleanse coming up, I'm, I'm going to be giving up sugar. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm the author of the story. I get to choose what giving up sugar means. Now, giving up sugar to me is going to mean that I can eat 90% dark chocolate because I choose the rules. I choose what that means. So you can choose what giving up carbs means to you. Giving up carbs might mean that you are giving up wheat products or gluten-based products, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to eat rice and sweet potato and gluten-free bread and other things like that. You get to choose and there's no one forcing you to do this. And that's the getting out of the victim mentality. Because if you think that this is something that is happening to you, something that you have to do, well, you're gonna fail before you start. You need to remember, this is what I'm choosing and I'm choosing it because, and then go back to your why and feel empowered about why you're doing it. You don't have to do, excuse my language, you don't have to do fuck all. Like, it's your choice. So really take ownership of it. No one is forcing you to do anything. And don't do it if you don't want to do it. Because if you don't want to do it, you're not gonna to stick to it. And then you're gonna feel like a failure and then you're gonna feel crappy and then you're gonna, you know, think, well, I was right. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't do anything. So yeah, be really, really mindful of how you frame your thinking. Um, because it will, it will determine whether this is um, gonna work for you. Um, so yeah, I would, uh, as I've talked about the cleanse, I'm sure you guys are aware that we have a cleanse program starting, um, next Monday. Would absolutely love to have you join. There's still plenty of time to join. Um, and in that program, I will help you go into more detail around health goals specifically. Um, but we will go much deeper into this topic of creating, um, a 30 day, um, health goals, and that's around what we eat, how we move, our sleep, and our joy in life. Um, and yeah, you know, you'll be 100% supported and be in a great community. So if that's something that you're interested in doing, then please come and join. You do have until Friday of this week to join, and then um, 
our doors are closed until our next cleanse. So uh, if you want to check out more information, just go to breathingmeditate.com forward slash cleanse. Really would love, love to have you join. I don't think you'll regret it. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you know about is the, um, the is this group. So what's going to be happening is that every week I will be coming on a Wednesday for the slightly generic name of Wellness Wednesdays, um, where I'll I'll intend to be here for about fifteen minutes as a live video on a on a specific topic. But of course, like if you've got any questions you know, that are different from the topic that I'm discussing that day and, you know, you want to get an answer, then I'd be happy to answer your question, even if it's not related to the topic. But um, my, our first topic, and this is a requested one, so, uh, you know, if you have something specific that you want um, more information about, you know, just drop me a message and um, I can make it one of our topics. Um, but this was a topic requested which was about um, how to have radiant skin. So this will be our first topic starting, um, not this coming Wednesday, but next Wednesday. And the live will be at one o'clock um, every Wednesday. So of course, it's so wonderful to have people join live. Um, it makes me feel like I'm not just talking to a screen. Um, so it, of course, it is my preference, if at all possible, that you would join live. But if not, then you'll have access to the recording, of course. Um, and when you're live, you can also ask questions in real time, uh, which you know you can't if you're not live. So that's what's going to be happening in this group, a Wellness Wednesday, one o'clock on a Wednesday, live broadcast with a specific topic, um, but also any questions that you have about anything, whether it's intermittent fasting, keto coffee, carbs, protein, <laughs> vegan, living, um, anything like that. I'm so happy to answer your questions to the best of my ability. And what I'll do is I'll set up a post every Monday um, asking for your questions. And if you don't want to, if you want to keep your question anonymous, then you can just message it to me rather than um, put it out to the group. But don't feel like no one's going to judge you for any questions you have. I'm certain of that. So yeah, that's my plan um, for, um, well, for this first quarter and we'll see how it goes. And if you guys seem to enjoy it, then I would uh, love to continue with it. So um, yeah, if you've got any questions about uh, goal setting, then um, feel free to pop them in the comments. And um, otherwise, what I'd love and really encourage you to do, because writing down your goal is so is so key, writing it, speaking it, announcing it to people. Um, because, so say for example, you know, I told you how I had the idea to come in and do this workshop. Um, imagine if I just hadn't told you guys about it, then, Come today, I would have thought, oh no, not gonna, not gonna bother. You know, I, my to do list is too long, and I'm, you know, just not, not gonna do it. But because I'd announced it, because I told you guys, then I had to keep myself accountable by the fact that I'd put it out there. I'd let you guys know that I was gonna be here, and so you kept me accountable. I came because of you. So if you do the same and put your, put it out there you will, it will help you to be accountable. It'll help you to stick to it because you've, you've announced it, you've declared it, you've let it be known that this is what you've chosen. So if you would like to put into the group what your goal is and just put hashtag 2021 goal, um, then that's going to really help you to be kept accountable to it just by, just by putting it out there. That's all it takes. And then I would also encourage that you you have it somewhere in your home as well. So perhaps, again, if it's weight loss that's your goal, you may have something on your fridge, an affirmation of some sort of, you know, if it's sugar that you're releasing, you know, I, I choose to release, I choose to release the addiction of sugar or, you know, whatever would speak to you. But having some kind of reminder of what it is that you that you are choosing, and I'm very clear that it's the word you are choosing, um, because this is what you want. It's not what anyone else wants. It's not what you have to do. It's what you want, um, and so really own that and take 
take accountability for it and by putting it out there um, to other people but reminding yourself as well um, it will help you to stick to it so um, yeah I think that's everything and thanks to you guys who were here live um, it's great to have your company and I will see you guys uh, if I'm not seeing you in the cleanse starting on Monday next Monday in one week if I'm not seeing you there I will see you here next Wednesday have a really wonderful rest of your week love to hear what your goals are so please pop them in the Facebook group and um, we will be cheering you on take care bye